Hey guys, you guys are watching Vito's Garage. My name is Vito and this is an uh, old school Mercedes Benz. Uh, thanks for tuning in and thank you for saving old school Mercedes. Alright guys, so in this video, uh, what I'm doing is I'm actually doing the whole car inspection. So I'm going to check the brakes, check, you know, suspension components, check everything else and, you know, I'm going to let the owner know what the car needs. So I'm just going to bring you guys along because I'm sure you guys enjoy it you guys enjoy these types of videos so and same thing with me I love working on these old school cars and saving them all so as you can see okay, this is my 126 right there but today our focus is on this 1979 W123 Mercedes this is a Euro model uh, it was actually imported from Canada um, and then it has a you can see this amazing green color paint and also the interior is actually green color so it's kind of like green on green uh, it's got nice hubcaps and all that so and also big plus it's a 3.0 OM 617 with the stick shift so it's got four, four speed manual transmission in it it's amazing uh, it's a great car and uh, uh, this car was acquired recently maybe like a month ago by um, you know a buddy of mine so I'm helping him out right now with this thing because he's planning to take it from Washington to California. Uh, you know, he's trying to actually drive it like the same, you know, after I started telling him all the stories how I took my 126 pretty much across the country, uh, he wants to do the same thing with this car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over everything, you know, and we're going to inspect all the components of this car. Um, and yeah, after that, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll do a test drive, but it's probably not needed. But we'll see. So first thing, as you can see, I have a couple of tools out here. You know, my jack, jack stand, and the rubber pad. Really important when you're jacking it up, always use a piece of wood or a rubber like this. And then when you put a jack stand, you should probably use one of these as well. It's actually a really good idea. Alright guys, so since the car is on the ground right now, so before I lift it up, what I like to do is I like to uh, bounce the car up and down in the front and in the back just to check the shock absorbers. So, the way you do it, my gloves are clean, so just start bouncing it. And then when you bounce it a couple times, let it go, and after you let it go, the car has to actually stop bouncing like pretty much right away. So that tells you that the shocks are good. And if you look, it's got a KYB shock absorber, so they did replace it at some point. Now, we're gonna go to the back. Do the same thing to the back. So, I don't know if that was noticeable, but I did shake it, and then as soon as I stopped shaking it, it stopped uh, bouncing. So that tells me that the shock absorbers are good in this car. And you can do the same thing to that side if you want to, but I already checked that side is good. So we're gonna move on. All right guys, so what I have here is the tire tread depth tool uh, to measure the tread of the tires. So you can see it has green, yellow, and red. You can buy this at uh, Walmart, I believe, or it's, it's pretty cheap. It's like you can buy it for like a dollar. Um, it's called a tire tread depth gauge. So what I'm using this for is I'm going to go all the way down like this with it. Then I'm going to put it between the grooves. I'm going to press it down. As you can see, it's in green, and we have 8, 30 seconds. You can do the same to the middle groove. And this is a 7, 30 seconds. And let's do the other one, last one. This one's 8, 30 seconds. So, what we have is 8, 30 seconds, 7, 30 seconds, and 8, 30 seconds. So, since we have 7.30 seconds in the middle and more tread here, that means that this tire is over inflated. 
it's overinflated, then what's gonna happen is the middle part is gonna wear more if it's overinflated. So we're gonna check the tire pressures as well. But that's the rear. Now we go to the front. Gonna do the same to the front. 830 seconds. 830 seconds. Uh, 730 seconds. So might be wearing a little bit on the inside, but it's not bad at all. And these tires are in great condition, they're like brand new. Um, these are 14 inch uh, wheels, as you guys all know. So I remember uh, for my 123, I actually have, uh, you know, I bought a, it was probably two years ago, I bought a, a new set of these Hankook Optima wheels, uh, tires, I'm sorry. And it was a pretty good deal. I bought it on eBay for like 180 bucks and then I installed them. I leave the link down below so you guys can go check out the video when I was changing my tires on my 123. So. so that's that. And of course, don't forget to check the rest of the tires. Don't forget to check that side. But now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check the tire pressures, see if this tire pressure is correct and all that and if needed I'll adjust it a few moments later so let's see if this tire pressure is low or high or whatever uh, it's a little low actually it's 25 but yeah but usually if you get a tire wear in the middle of your tire that means that your tire is overinflated. If your tire is low in air, then your sides are gonna be wearing more than the middle. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, this is 25, so I'm gonna have to adjust the pressure on that guy. Let's check the rest of them. Ooh, what happened? I don't see the... Oh wow, where's the valve stem? Who was working on this car last? That's no good, okay. I'm gonna have to remove this hubcap. So, someone, whoever put this hubcap on, didn't put it on right. As you can see, it started like wearing right there. And uh, he forgot about that, so that's no good. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is, yeah, I'm gonna check the rest of those tire pressures and if needed, I'm gonna top them off or adjust them as needed. Same thing goes to that side. And they're all pretty much like 25 PSI. So they're all pretty low, so I have to adjust them. So what I'm doing right now, I'm lifting it up until the wheel starts spinning. And now this is a good sign, it means the caliper is not seized. All right, so this is a really good sign. Now what I'm looking for, I'm looking for something that's broken. I'm looking for, you know, cracked boots everywhere here. So I'm looking for all that. Now what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be shaking the wheel back and forth. So I'm gonna grab it at three o'clock position and nine o'clock, I'm gonna shake it. some play. I'm gonna check for ball joints and wheel bank play. There's a little bit of wheel bank play but that's not bad. It's pretty good.
Alright guys, so we'll put a jack stand under there and uh, I loosen these up the 17 millimeter. So I'm gonna take them out. I uh, inspect the brakes and the rotor. Make sure that's all good. That is awesome. Look at this, guys. All right, let's look at this. Ooh, made in Germany. Look at this, guys. This is a brand new Mercedes rotor. That's crazy, and it's OEM. It's a brand new brake hose, shock absorber, springs appear. Spring appears to be original. Um, that is amazing. A new caliper as well and brake pads. If you look at the brake pads. So that is amazing. I think this is the Bendix caliper right now. Probably. But it's brand new, which is awesome. Uh, wow. So another thing what you should do is you should have someone inside the car press the brake pedal, make sure when somebody presses the brake pedal, make sure this stays, it's not moving, and then tell the person to release the brake pedal. And when he releases the brake pedal, this should move freely right away. If not, then there's something wrong with your caliper. Let's look at these bushings. Just a little bit of cracking, not much. Actually, this, these bushings are actually no good. Yep. These bushings will need replacement, as you can see right there. Also, guys, quick tip: if you're working, you know, with a jack and jack stands, and you have to kneel to use something for your knees, protect your knees. Let me show you do this. See how it's popped out. So I think what happened here is they did not install it the right way. They did not install it the right way. So the way you're supposed to, when you, when you install uh, this control arm, you have to tighten this bushing when the car is all the way on the ground lowered, but they did not do that apparently because this seems looks like a fresh control arm honestly so yeah that's a shame it's gonna need to be replaced and then this lower mount right there for the guide rod is actually busted but it's still not, not a big deal and this bushing is kind of cracked again not critical at all and then let's look at the ball joint ball joint is actually pretty good still and I'm gonna need to as soon as he brings me the key I need to inspect the steering system because the steering system I feel like it has some play but I need to unlock the steering wheel to be sure and then this is your guide rod and it's actually in good condition no problems there this looks like a Germany so it's original tie rod assembly which is nice yeah, it's got a bunch of new parts. All right, guys, so I'm done on this side. Tires are good. Also, guys, don't forget to do tire rotation every like four, five thousand miles. Pretty much any car you have, you should be doing it. A few moments later. Maccabi. 
גם אם לא יודו בזה... And then, don't forget to tighten all this German tight. Perfect. Now, we're gonna put this hubcap on. Just be really careful with it. Make sure this Gaston goes through the hole. That's what she said. start in one spot and then kind of go all the way around That's how it's supposed to be. And now you can see this is out like that. I'm gonna do the same to that side. I'm not gonna be filming it unless there's something that I find. Let's look at this control arm. Oh, is that, is it the same on that one as well? Let's see. Kinda. Yeah, it kinda is. The bushing is a little tired. Interesting, so I'm gonna check for play and everything, make sure there's no play, but yeah. My main thing right now is to check everything here. I'm gonna pull this wheel off and uh check the brakes and everything the diff is leaking a little bit so we might have to hmm, might have to check the fluid level we'll see i haven't seen this before this looks like a different did they reinforce this thing or something i don't know this is a euro model let me know guys because on the other 123s i have never seen something like that before but maybe it's uh, it's just like a reinforcement bar that they put in here, I don't know. Maybe it's factory, so I'll have to lift this up and double check. As far as in the rear, this is where I like to lift it up from. Either from this subframe bushing or right there. It's actually the best spot. I don't like using, well, you can use this, but I don't like putting a jack right here or anything like that like I said don't forget to use a piece of wood or rubber that okay so I lifted the rear removed the lug bolts and I can take this off alright alright guys so here's the brake disc New caliper, and, you know, brake pads, brand new, brake hose, nice right, shock absorbers right there as well. So this is pretty awesome. This is in good shape. They even put the, the copper paste in there, which is amazing. One thing is I'm not going to be checking the parking brake shoes because you have to pull all this off and all that stuff. And the parking brake works amazing. There's no issues with that. So. Now, okay, so this is, maybe it's because this is a European version, 
it's pretty interesting um, has a different type of sway bar link right here it has a metal one kind of like a reinforcement one it's pretty cool and then this is what I was talking about actually haven't seen yeah I believe this is gonna be well I don't know they probably added that thing to it or like this whole bar like it goes there so I don't know if this is a factory or if this is not let me know guys I would like to know because on the other 123s like on mine and others all of them that I've seen they only had they never had this bar it looks like it's removable as well there's like a couple of bolts I don't know that'd be good uh, interesting to know and then what else I'm just gonna well this the axles have cracks you know it's not too too bad you know my 126 had pretty bad cracks when I was driving from Illinois to California it had like a lot worse cracks on that thing and I made it no problem uh, that thing it's a little bit better so it will need to be addressed in the future for sure but it's just this uh, diff is kind of leaking and it seems like it's leaking from that rear cover they did not seal it properly so that kind of sucks so I'm gonna probably have to check the fluid level on that thing also when you're checking sway bar links just grab it like this grab the sway bar and just move it up and down see if you feel the play and I think I feel a little bit of play a little bit of play in this sway bar link not too much and it's not making a noise right now while driving because we drove this thing yesterday so we're good on this so I'm gonna tell him that it has a little bit of play uh, I'm gonna address all the things but now a really good thing to check would be they're actually uh, a little tired not that bad a little bit of cracking there and then these trailing arm bushings mm, need to check that other one as well this doesn't seem too bad it's just a little bit of cracking it's not much considering this car is 40 years old it's amazing nice thing to do a fluid film on this car as well like always you guys know and then a good thing is to actually put put some lubricant here so it doesn't uh, get seized up one eternity later all right that's it guys tighten the lock bolts german type this is all reinstalled the hubcap this is in a in a spot where it's supposed to be yeah uh, probably from that side i'll be able to As you can see, this was replaced as well, the flex disc and trans mount. Engine trans leaking a little bit, not bad. So center support was done in the bearing and also the rear flex disc. The only thing is exhaust fell off yesterday, right there, so that will have to be uh, redone. And as far as the axles on this side, they have a little bit of cracks on the boots, 
Actually, that one has a lot more right there. Mm, yep. So we'll see. I might actually tell him uh, that uh, he should probably order those maybe new axles or I'll just change uh, the boots for him. I don't know what he's going to want to do, but I'll probably re recommend replacing this side. And then let me see. Let me try to zoom in for you so you guys can see brand new flex disc. I am really not sure what brand that is, but you can see fresh bolts right there and nuts. That was done. Also, brand new caliper here. So they, they replace calipers on... Uh, all four calipers were replaced and as you can see this side has also that like I don't know the sway bar reinforcement something so I would really love to know the only thing that's really funny is uh, these tail lamps are not Euro the Euro ones look a little different they're all orange here so that's kind of interesting I'll show you the interior a little later, but what else is gonna see? Yeah, same thing on this side, caliper and all that. I just need to. Oh, okay. I think I see the problem already. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Oh, look at that torn boot right there. That's probably my problem. I just can't tell where the play is coming from because the steering wheel is locked. So when you move it, it kind of like. It's not helping out, so what I'm gonna need to do is uh, actually I'm gonna have to um, what's it called? Uh, I'm gonna have to have them unlock the steering wheel so I can do it, it normally and properly. No sunroof guys on this one. Alright guys, so here's the interior. I wonder I wanna try and I don't know if you can fix this or not. It's kinda like darker here, but uh overall it's a really nice, you know, interior in this color. You know, green and all that, it's pretty old school. So, as you can see, there's no no vacuum lines or anything like that. So, and I want to check this shifter. It's kind of stiff. Like, it shouldn't be like that. You, you know what I'm talking about, guys? It's like, it's not right. Maybe it needs lubrication. So, anyways, what I was going to tell you is I need to unlock the steering wheel because it's locked right now and then uh, I want to check my steering system once again lift it up and check and this is so nice look at this thing it's actually smooth so they probably lubricated that stuff it's so easy to turn nice so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift it up again and shake the wheel see where the play is coming from all right, it's all jacked up on jack stand. I'm gonna go ahead and try to identify the problem. Ball joint is good. So I'm on the driver's side right now and here's what I found out is that actually the play that was there it's actually from the from the um, gearbox itself so because there's no loose links or anything like that uh, the only thing is that this is just a little bit torn up but it's not torn all the way so we're gonna be good on this actually for now but what I was gonna show you is I see what happens when people don't uh, 
uh, torque these properly uh, I mean for example when they replaced this bushing they were supposed to lower the car all the way down and then tighten this nut and bolt all together but it seems like they did not do that or I don't know um, it's just uh, it's kind of shot but it doesn't really affect the drivability you know these cars are amazing these cars even with the all messed up suspension it's still gonna drive like a dream uh, that's what happened with my 123 when I got it for 400 bucks uh, is that the whole suspension was shot and I had to drive 100 miles but I never felt any clunks or anything in it and yes, if you guys remember that video I'll leave the link down below you guys can watch it if you haven't um, that my ball joints had so much play and my whole suspension was shot but that thing was still driving no problem uh, there's belts all right so this is all good so i'm gonna make a list a little later but now the engine mounts are good actually i inspected them the other day they were replaced and these are pretty dry the engine cooling lines which is good so yeah seems like this is i don't know maybe they just didn't clean it up or whatever but this is a oil pan and it's pretty dry it's awesome oh uh, what else i'm not sure if they replaced the transmission manual transmission fluid but i might recommend it for them <laughs> just in case because it's a good idea if he's gonna drive to california then yeah looks like this pan was damaged a little bit yeah it's kind of doesn't look good here so i don't know I'm, I'm gonna probably maybe i'll recommend it for them you know they they don't go for us it's like so expensive it's just like i've seen one for 20 27 bucks it was a phoebe brand actually not a bad brand um, so that's gonna be the plan and i always look at those bushings Now it's time to open the hood. Now, also, what I'm gonna recommend is I'm gonna recommend him floor mats uh, to keep these all nice and original because you're supposed to put floor mats, you know. A lot of people think that these are floor mats, but like if you think about it, especially if you're you know living you know driving during winters and all the junk and salt gets here and it just ruins all these nice mats. And yeah, I'm gonna recommend these pads for them as well. They're pretty shot. This one is good. A couple more things that I'm gonna recommend for them. All right, let's open this baby up so you guys can look at it. This thing needs a lot of lubrication. Everything is dry right there. And all that. Might need, looks like this was replaced. The, or maybe they just cleaned the engine like that. It's hard to say, but this looks like the hand vacuum, like the hand pump is brand new and also this priming pump is new. I see the problem right there. There's a, this thing that came off, the retainer. Maybe I can fix this guy. It's not supposed to be like that. You guys see what I'm talking about? There's a hole in there, so I gotta fix that. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna recommend the diesel purge because it seems like they probably done it recently. The previous owner have done it. Has done it. So also make sure these are, uh, see this? thing right here the tube that's the drain tube make sure it's not clogged with no leaves or anything so that's good and this is not clogged which is great um, make sure the belts are good and this belt appears to be good let's see the alternator belt on no, your alternator but uh, sometimes there's a problem with it sometimes it's not charging sometimes the battery light stays on but then you keep start driving and then it goes away it's kind of interesting so 
have to do something about that probably but yeah this actually car has no air conditioning so I don't see the air conditioner in there uh, and yeah I'll have to double check this alternator because it's brand new and motor mounts are good and then starter was replaced right there and then I don't know how old this battery is but I'm gonna probably recommend well he doesn't have keepers as well as you can see just keepers are missing but this battery looks fresh and then you see the starter is brand new right there so some things here and there let's check the clip on it wow why is it wow that was something new the engine is cold interesting the coolant is there bit low not too much let's see vacuum pump check the fan clutch is good let's make sure this radiator this is radiator right there and it's good it's not clogged up unlike mine there's a lot of bugs in mine and here there's a couple that's not a mosquito that's something else yeah. um, this is good. The hoses it appears they did them at some point. The lobes, everything looks good. Yeah, looks like new glow plugs in there. The injectors were probably redone as well. They look kind of fresh. Oil is in the middle now. I don't know when they did the oil change last time. Let's. Try. Oh, there's no sticker inside. Okay, that sucks. So I might have to recommend to do the oil change just in case. If he's gonna go that far. Brake fluid, a little bit discolored. It's not bad. the line for the clutch cylinder and I'm gonna probably check the fuses as well and check the air filter one hour later All right. put that one back in the rubber retainer another thing what I'm gonna recommend is Lubricating all the moving parts, removing the straddle linkage, lubricating all these. Um, what else I'm gonna do? Let's see. Probably adjust the steering gearbox, maybe, um, to eliminate a little bit of play. But also, I noticed this crack. And well, I don't know might be a little serious we might have to change that thing but um yeah i can't tell right now i'm gonna have to look for for it uh, i will probably have to change it just because well it's just cracked in one spot but still i right, guess I'm gonna do a cold start right now of this OM617 uh, Euro uh, W123 9 1979. Alright, so we got a stick, it's a neutral. Let's make sure this is off. They did, um, somebody whoever owned this thing, they they put a different, uh, there's like some aftermarket button here for the glow plugs. 
so that's why you don't see the glow plug light anymore but i gotta hold that thing all right after i'm done i can start it up all right ready See the battery light I was talking about? I have to double check that. Car is running. Battery light is on. Alternator is brand new. Let's see if it's gonna charge when I give it fuel. Interesting. So it's charging when you give it fuel, but at first it did not charge. Interesting. Is that a faulty regulator, maybe? It's charging now. And I sprayed some of this, like a special lube on here because that's what you're supposed to do on these cars otherwise this thing gets like dry and it just uh, starts like rusting and 